You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. And take a look at my other YouTube channels too. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email list to get early access to everything I release. All links are in the description. In this podcast, last year, Kanye West came out of the closet as a Nazi. I'm not using that word offhandedly. I mean, he's a full-blown, self-avowed Nazi. He announced his position on the Jewish community at the same time he announced his 2024 presidential candidacy. Well, he's made a complete U-turn. He's apologized to the Jewish community and apparently canceled his presidential run. Let's talk about it. Rick Scarborough, evangelical extremist, really doesn't like Santa. I mean, the dude hates Santa. He feels the same way about the gay community, as a matter of fact. In recent clips, he went off on the LGBT community for looking gay. Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. He doesn't think people should look gay. Bill Nye debated Congressman Marsha Blackburn on climate change back in 2014. How'd the debate hold up after all these years? It's bad, but in an entertaining way. What are these people gonna say for themselves as it gets more obvious and undeniable? This video is a fascinating watch and a piece of history. A piece of embarrassing history for Marsha Blackburn. We also take voicemails. If you wanna leave a voicemail, the number is 1-800-701-8573. If you wanna send me an email instead, just go to my website, owenmorgan.com, click the contact me button in the menu and uh, send me a message that way. So I've been writing this book about Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, not available yet, although if it is available as of this moment, check my community posts. Check my website, owenmorgan.com slash book. That will tell you if uh, the book is available or not. It'll tell you the progress and everything else. Just give it a look. I'm super excited about it. It's about Jehovah's Witnesses, their history, their prophecy, their culture, the whole nine yards. So hopefully you guys get to read that. But somebody left a voicemail about one of the original presidents of Jehovah's Witnesses. It was the second president, Joseph Rutherford. He was legal counsel for the Watchtower Society, I think from 1909 to 1917. Charles Taze Russell, the official founder of the Bible Students, is what it was called before it was Jehovah's Witnesses. He was basically the, the founder of the Watchtower Society, and he died Halloween night, 1916. When he died, there was a power struggle. Joseph Rutherford, being legal counsel and being trained in the law, effectively did a hostile takeover of the organization, took control as the next president. There were elections for the, the position of presidency, but... Basically, people were like voting to see who should be nominated for different groups. And Joseph Rutherford, as soon as he was nominated, closed nominations. And then he ran unopposed as the president of the Watchtower Society and, of course, won. Anyway, big, long power struggle, middle, middle, middle. He became the president, died in 1942 of cancer. Uh, so he was president from 1917 to 1942. Well, I got a voicemail from a caller about Joseph Rutherford, so uh, give this a listen. Hey, Owen, have you ever thought that maybe the reason why Joseph Rutherford was clean-shaven is because he was incapable of growing a beard himself? That might have been the reason. Also, it is impossible for a lawyer to be a judge. When lawyers become judges, they have to give up their bar cards. Therefore, uh, Rutherford was probably never really a judge at all. Uh, I'm just throwing that out there. Anyway, uh, love your show. Bye. Fascinating. I did not know that. If somebody has some insight into that, I, you know, please put it in the comments. That's really, really interesting. Because uh, Joseph Rutherford goes by Judge Rutherford. That's what he always called himself or what people called him, Judge Joseph Rutherford. If he was a judge, he wouldn't have had you know his he wouldn't have been barred basically you get you take the bar exam and you get accepted into the bar and then you can be a lawyer in whatever field basically but he was serving as legal counsel for the watchtower society from i think 1909 until 1917 and if he was legal counsel back then i don't know if he could have been a judge before of course this is like in the you know, 19th century and the early 20th century. So maybe it was different back then. But anyways, about the beard thing. Yeah, Joseph Rutherford also banned beards, fascinatingly. The reason was because his predecessor, Charles Taze Russell, had a big bushy beard. 
and he didn't want people to be reminded of his predecessor because of the hostile takeover. Things were a little touchy. People started growing beards to look like Charles Taze Russell. He actually, throughout the process of the hostile takeover, lost one-seventh, roughly, the membership and staff and everything of the Watchtower Society as he was taking it over. So, anyways, he banned beards because he didn't want anyone to be reminded of his predecessor. And they remained banned all the way up until 2023, the end of 2023, fascinatingly. So, I mean, that's possible that maybe he just couldn't grow a beard. He always stayed clean shaven, even before banning beards. So, yeah, thank you for the call. Oh, hey there, Owen. This is Jen from Michigan. Um, I just wanted to bring up as a, as a uh, Catholic that I've heard from a couple of my priests actually say that uh, Biden is not allowed to receive communion due to, I guess, his support of abortion, which is something that that stance I don't agree with, you know, about him being banned from um, receiving communion. Um, I just thought I'd share that. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Appreciate it. Yes, I believe that that's true. Uh, in fact, Biden is not the only one who's been banned from taking communion. It, w- it was also Nancy Pelosi who's been banned. Now, for the record, Biden does not believe in abortion. He wouldn't get an abortion, but he just doesn't believe that he has the right to control other people's lives. A true, uh, not small government person, but a uh, limited control government type of person. He recognizes not everybody in the country is Catholic, and he can't impose his Catholic views on everybody else. That's super respectable. So anyways, yeah, um, throughout time, different people have been banned from taking communion for not, in an authoritarian way, forcing their will on others. The Vatican does that from time to time. The Vatican is super, super, super pro-life. It's, like, absurd and out of control, and they try to sway the political decisions of people in other countries by pulling religious rights from them and things like that. So not great. Anyway, thank you for the uh, voicemail. I mean, people have weird ideas about communion and what it means and if you'll survive, if you don't take it and everything else. Jesus just said, do this in a remembrance of me. This is my body. This is my blood. Drink it and blah, blah, blah. It didn't say, if you don't do this, you're not making it into heaven or whatever. He just said, Remember me by doing this. I don't know how anybody can yank that from anyone else. You, you should be free to do that if you want. Like, who cares? It, uh, according to this, what I'm seeing here on cbsnews.com, Biden is welcome to receive communion at churches in the archdiocese. Mr. Biden met with Pope Francis last month at the Vatican, where Biden said the Pope told him he was a good Catholic and should keep taking communion. This is from 2021. So Biden may have been banned from it at some point, but is no longer. Either way, the Vatican has absolutely done that before. Um, Again, Nancy Pelosi was banned at one point, I think, for one reason or another. Pelosi receives communion. This is from NPR.org. Pelosi receives communion in the Vatican despite her home archbishop refusing it. The head of the church in San Francisco said, okay, so... People, these people are allowed to take communion at the Vatican. It's not the Pope that's telling them no. It's their local church that's telling them no. That makes more sense. That that checks out. Anyways, yeah, that should shed some light on the subject. Thank you for the uh, voicemail. I appreciate it. Hey, you forgot to upload a um, podcast um, episode 288. That's all I just want to tell you. Thank you. I appreciate you letting me know. It's actually really valuable when people call in and let me know if I missed something, because from time to time I do. However, that was intentional. That one was. I specifically and intentionally did not upload that week's because I wanted to push it back a week. By uploading it when I was, it was crippling my views on my Fireside Chat channel badly. I was getting like a third of the views that I was before because people were just waiting for the audio form to release on Monday, listening to it, and then not watching any of the videos on the channel. So I staggered it. I pushed it back so that the podcast releases after the videos have already released. That way people can pick whichever they want, but 
video form comes out first. Anyway, thanks for letting me know. It, it, seriously, continue to let me know. If I miss one of these, I may not even realize it. It's important. You know, I, I, I'm just one dude sitting here trying to <laughs> manage this whole thing. Sometimes I mess up. So thanks for letting me know. Hey, oh, what I was calling in regards to you saying that uh, porn addiction and sex addiction may not be a thing. It's a lot like a eating addiction or... Talking about porn addiction, yeah. So in a video a little while back, I'm sorry, I don't normally interrupt the voicemails. Give me a second to explain. I talked about sex addiction in a video a while back, and I said that my professor in school, in, you know, I, my psychology professor, he believed that sex addiction was real. And I'm not so sure. That's what I said. Now, porn addiction, that's a totally different thing. That is something coming from an outside source that is predatory and manipulative toward the people who are consuming this content. In the same way that gambling is coming from an outside source, somebody is walking in and taking part in a process that is predatory and manipulative. Porn addiction is 100% real. If I said, maybe I did say porn addiction mistakenly. I apologize. I shouldn't have said that if I did. But you're right. Absolutely. You are correct to say that porn addiction is real. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about it in a second. Let's just listen to the voicemail. Hey, oh, what I was calling in regards to you saying that uh, porn addiction and sex addiction may not be a thing. Right. Sex addiction is what I said isn't real. It's a lot like a eating addiction or gambling addiction, video game addiction, or any other addiction. This is an unhealthy behavior. I was four addiction I had was when I was 18 to 23. I think I spent like $18,000 over the course of those years on porn sites and VHS tapes because I was that is a lot. 18000 Is that what he said? $18,000 over the course of a few years on like VHS tapes and stuff. Boy, that is rough. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah, definitely. Gambling, food addiction is real. Porn addiction is real. I mean, all, all this stuff is real. Video game addiction is another one for sure. I agree. And w to make it even worse, the industry that we're talking about, God, I, I'm going to be demonetized for this. The industry we're talking about is deeply predatory. Like, look at what Andrew Tate did. He even said that he did this. He had some girls that were talking, just normal. They were on a camera, and they were just talking to people, and they were pretending to type, especially if they're offline, you know, pretend to talk to people as they message them. And in reality, it was Andrew Tate on the other end saying stuff to these guys to get them to get their grandma's credit card and pay him whatever he could get out of him. The girl wasn't even involved in the process. It's about as predatory as it gets. And it's just disgusting how predatory this stuff is. I'm old and anything that gets in the way of your real relationship and you get this not firing with sex addiction, it's more having said, you know, regardless of how dangerous the situation is, even if you're married and stuff like that, I just think it's important to realize that all addiction is is uh, doing things to an extreme to get that high of getting off and, you know, feeling good from doing things in an unhealthy manner. So I just want to clarify that. Uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for all you do. Bye. Appreciate the voicemail there. Yes, absolutely. As you said, uh, all addiction is, it's basically just taking things to an extreme and, there's a model that represents when you have an addiction and when you're just enjoying something. Do you go out of your way to, for example, let's just take alcohol, for example. Do you go out of your way to drink? Will you like leave work early to get to a liquor store in time to buy alcohol? Does it interfere with your everyday life? Do you find yourself like skipping work or do you find yourself not being able to go out with friends because... You need to do this, get alcohol or, or whatever. Do you see your finances taking a serious hit because of the addiction that you're dealing with? Addiction and dependence are not the same thing, by the way. People have dependencies on coffee, for example, but it, coffee isn't like ruining their lives and they can take it or leave it. They just know that they're going to have a head, uh, I'm sorry. They just know that they're going to have a headache if they don't drink coffee. The coffee could be an addiction too. Some people have an addiction to coffee as well as a dependence, a physical dependence. But anyway, the point is that uh, 
Yeah, there's a model. I don't remember what the model is exactly, but those are just a couple of examples of things that are on it. Does it interfere with your everyday life? Do you find yourself going out of your way to get this thing or to do this thing or whatever? I agree that porn addiction is 100% real. Sex addiction, I, I think that... I'll give you that. I think it's more complicated than that. It's more complicated than porn addiction or than alcohol addiction. I suppose I can see a, a circumstance in which it could be an addiction. I'd have to give it more thought. Anyway, thank you guys for the uh, voicemails. I appreciate that. Next up, last year, Kanye West came out of the closet as a Nazi. I'm not using that word offhandedly. I mean, he's a full-blown, self-avowed Nazi. He announced his position on the Jewish community at the same time he announced his 2024 presidential candidacy. Well, he's made a complete U-turn. He's apologized to the Jewish community and apparently canceled his presidential run. Let's talk about it. We'll be right back. Don't forget to check out my Patreon and check out my website and email list for early access to uncensored, ad-free, complete videos. All links are in the description. Uh, but I mean, just because you're in love with the design, you're a designer. Can we just kind of say, like, you like the, the you like the uniforms, but that's about no, it. No, we we no. I, there, there's a lot of things that I love about Hitler. A lot of things. Oopsie Daisy. This is Kanye West, by the way. He's wearing a mask. But that's him. That is absolutely him. They tweeted from his account while he was on the show. I watched this whole interview beginning to end. This is Kanye West. And he's expressing his love and interest for Hitler. Now, the reason that we're talking about this, this happened, all I don't know, December 2022, I think. Well, as it turns out, Kanye West kind of um, stepped in it. He realized that he made a mistake. Now, he actually got dropped by Nike, which was uh, basically a billion-dollar deal. He lost a billion dollars. He went from, I don't know what he was worth, $1.5 billion maybe. He went all the way down to like $200 million, and he only had some of that in cash and assets and stuff. He had almost nothing. He'd lost, well, I mean, he still had $250 million. I don't even feel right saying he had nothing, but he lost so much stuff. After he said he hates Jews, he loves Hitler, and he was doing the right thing. Really? I'm not joking. If that clip you just saw didn't seal the deal for you, wait. Just wait. We'll get to some other heinous stuff that he said. But first, I want to talk about Nick Fuentes, because he was, for lack of a better term, Kanye West's, I don't know what you call it, like campaign official or campaign manager. I don't know. He followed him everywhere. He went on his private jet. He did everything for him. He blah, 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 all of it. Until suddenly and seemingly out of nowhere, he didn't. Just like that. He was just like not with Kanye anymore at his mansion. And nobody had any kind of explanation for what was going on. Kanye dropped out of the limelight after announcing his, his run for presidency on the fact that he wanted to get all Jews out of the United States. I am not joking. After that, he just hit radio silence. I think he, Kanye got remarried, maybe, and his wife caught some attention for wearing an upside-down cross. I don't know. Anyways, Nick Fuentes has a message for us here. He's very upset. This is late December 2023. Got some disappointing news about Kanye. Check this out. Kind of a big, tough black pill for all of us to swallow tonight. Black pill means disappointment. It's kind of um, nihilism, feeling like, uh, you know, things just fell apart. Black pill for all of us to swallow tonight. Not exactly surprising. Disappointing, but not really a surprise. Our featured story tonight, we're talking about, yay. Yeah, Kanye West's changed his name legally to Ye. I'm not using the name Ye for him. You know why? I believe that his attempt to change his name to Ye was a method of protecting his brand, Kanye West. It was an attempt to not sully the name that he had spent, you know, decades building up. I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of protecting his name from being tied to Nazism. 
And also, the guy is very clearly, like, he has mental illness of some sort. I don't know what. He says autism. Then before that, the doctors that were treating him, they said bipolar, and I'm more prone to believe doctors than Kanye. So I don't know. I don't know. Is he going to change his name again tomorrow to Khan? I Who knows? So I'm just calling him Kanye. That's what he's colloquially known as. That's what I will continue to call him. Talking about Ye, formerly a presidential candidate in this election, who is officially a... You catch what he said? Formerly. Formerly a presidential candidate. I don't, I don't remember hearing an official announcement from Kanye West saying he's no longer running. But, you know, I haven't heard a word. Like, there's complete radio silence. He didn't say to anybody. So I don't know. Candidate in this election who has officially apologized to the Jews. And last night at midnight on Christmas... Ye officially and formally apologized to the Jews in Hebrew for a so-called anti-Semitic outburst in which he praised Hitler. And we don't know if we're talking about the outburst last week or if it was about what happened last year. Last year is what we're going to look at throughout the remainder of this video. We're going to talk about his complete train wreck of an outburst in a minute but just keep listening here but it doesn't really make a difference he apologized and it's so over it's a total capitulation i never thought i would see it okay so that's nick fuentes being really disappointed that his boy kanye west is no longer a hitler lover and an anti-semite you know some a trend that i've noticed you know just in general is that on the right, interestingly, there seem to be two camps, okay? It's either complete, unadulterated, extreme love for the nation of Israel or complete, extreme hate for the nation of Israel. Now, after doing a little digging, I came to find that those two groups don't hold their positions for the same reasons. There are people on the left that love Israel and, and hate Israel right now as well. I think primarily the reason the left loves Israel is because a lot of Jews are on the left and their identity is tied to the state of Israel, and so they have to defend the state of Israel, no matter how disgusting and evil the, the government is, and it absolutely is. So the Jews support the nation of Israel. Everybody else, just about, on the left recognizes human rights abuses but neither of those things make a damn bit of difference to like the right and how they feel about the nation of israel the right likes israel for basically one reason and one reason alone because they need israel to exist as a country and they need them to rebuild solomon's temple the third temple before Armageddon can happen. That's the far-right evangelical type of people. The temple right now has not been rebuilt because a mosque has been constructed over that site for like a thousand years or something. Al-Aqsa, that's the name of the mosque. It's just like, if you want to build a temple there, you're going to have to destroy Al-Aqsa Mosque, which means Israel is now going to war with every Muslim nation that's i mean all of them and there are like one point there are almost as many muslims in the world as there are christians so israel's very hesitant about doing that the ones on the right that do not like israel don't like them for purely anti-semitic reasons seems to me like they just don't like jews like they think that they run the world and they're i don't know eating babies and blah blah blah, blah. I mean, you think of being facetious with the eating babies thing. I'm not. That's real. That's a real conspiracy theory. So anyways, um, it's hard to know where people fall at any one given moment. But I can tell you people on the right. I I've never met somebody on the right, never even heard of somebody on the right who likes the nation of Israel 
simply because they like the nation of Israel completely untied to religion in any way if they were on the right. I've never found somebody like that. That For what that's worth, kind of interesting. Hold on. I, I, I wanted to find... Let, let me see if I can find... He said that there was a uh, recent outburst from Kanye. Kanye West, who obtained the title Anti-Semite of the Year in 22 by Stop Anti-Semitism, went on an anti-Semitic rant in Las Vegas on December 15th, according to numerous media reports and footage taken of the incident. West also complained of the struggles of co-parenting with his ex-wife Kim Kardashian about former President Donald Trump and West's former business partners in the 10-minute long rant. Wow, he went on for 10 minutes? Oh, please tell me I can access this video. I so want access to this. So apparently this is an anti-Semitic rant from, I believe, mid to late December 2023. And he was in Las Vegas, and he just lost it, apparently. Here's the comment under it before we watch. It's unclear what this remark is in reference to, since as of 2021, the U.S. population was five and a half times that at 331.9 million people, according to the World Bank. Similarly, the Jewish Agency for Israel claimed in 2023 that there are only... 15.3 uh, million Jewish people in the world, which is also a far cry from the 60 million claimed by West, but in the opposite direction. Okay, let's listen. Mm. No, none of y'all mother here with no Instagram, nobody living, nobody at, and I don't want to hear from none of these Jewish talk about, oh, he's in an episode. Harley Passenick, follow me to the hotel. Then kill Aaron Carter, and now they acting like they won't kill yeah. uh, clear the Backstreet Boy yeah. sample. They killed Aaron Carter. Who is they? Are they in the room with us right now, Kanye? In all seriousness, who is he talking about right now? It's so deeply disturbing to hear this guy's mindset unfold in front of us, right? You get what I'm saying? Harley Pasternak pusher. Yeah. Your trainer. Yeah. Harley Pasternak, Jay-Z. You get what I'm saying? And then we yeah. hang around these yeah. Jeff for the money or some Mike Rubin. Yeah. Slap the yeah. out of Mike Rubin. Yeah. I see that. You know what I'm saying? It's like... I don't know who he's talking about. Like, Mike Rubin? Is that what he said? I, I don't know these people. Yo. Yeah, maybe they're people from, like, the music industry or something. These bro. These you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Did you see the woman? She flips the phone. Oh, that's funny. I love it. I'm on my Farrakhan Don right now, bro. Because guess what? These Yeezys gonna sell. FYI, Farrakhan. Uh, Farrakhan Don is already just said. Louis Farrakhan was an anti-Semitic far-right extremist, I believe leader of Nation of Islam, which, by the way, is not affiliated with the religion of Islam. It's just an extremist sectarian group that excludes white people. It's just not good. It's like black Israelites level bad, although I think they're different groups technically. Yeah. They sabotage the show today. They sabotage the Instagram. They cut off the... Dude, who is they? He says they want to get light skinned yay. Who is light skinned yay? That's Jerry. His real name is light skinned yay, bro. <laughs> that he told me that was his name. It was light skinned yay. They want the light skinned version. They want a George Floyd. They want a Virgil. They're like, they don't let me speak at the funeral. I saw two, three, four, five white people not let me speak at Virgil. None of y'all. Drake. That's because you act like a nutcase, Kanye. Really? Is this the the first time that these dots are connecting? They're not even connecting. This guy doesn't even realize why he's being denied access to speak at George Floyd's funeral or Virgil whoever's funeral or whatever. He doesn't even realize what he's done. He doesn't view it as wrong, apparently. Insane. I'm talking, baby. Drake, I love you. I'm gonna get the tattoo. But any of y'all, Drake, whoever, y'all gotta show up. And don't tell me I'm talking crazy. That I'm mother Pharrell and me. Hey, come on. Me, Pharrell, we broke down this door. We all in this together. We all in this together. And we all dealing with a lot of. We all, and what I'm telling you. Nobody wants anything to do with him anymore. 
The line has been crossed. The Rubicon has been crossed. It's over, Kanye. When you did all of that crazy shit that we'll play in a minute, it was over. Okay, no one wanted to work with you anymore ever again. What the hell is he doing in Las Vegas? How did he find a small group of people may, that presumably are not Nazis to sit in a room with him? A lot of people have shit to say about my Jewish comment, but ain't nobody in this mother room and none of y'all entertaining ever said nothing when I was praying to see my kids one of the last days. Uh, 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 what's my name that got um, locked up for the mega salad? Shit? I'm not sure what he's talking about. Okay, look. So Tory Lanez called me. We were. I, I don't know Tory Lanez. Saying prayers. We were saying prayers on the phone together, and I prayed. That day, and y'all saw that shit, and y'all saw when I couldn't see my kids, when I couldn't see Chicago, too. Okay, is his argument here that I wanted to see my kids, and nobody said anything when I wanted to see my kids, but when I literally wish death upon Jews and say that Hitler did not go far enough, I'm not being hyperbolic, that's what he said. Like, what do you expect? Really? This is nuts. All y'all niggas on Instagram got to say. Y'all niggas saw this. Don't tell me about my political opinion. I made more money to show you that money ain't nothing. It's our money. It's our country. It's how he stole it from us. It's pyramid. Like, why does it keep beeping like that? What is that? Just is that like me or? It's our country. It's how he stole it from us. It's pyramid. No, it's just part of the video, I guess. Pyramids in St. Louis and again, Missouri. They stole it. All this America just the latest bitch that been ran through so many times. The Greeks hit her. Massa Musa hit her. We had her. The Indians are shit. The motherfucking the motherfucking pilgrims is the Jewish shit. dressed the same. Shit. It's the same shit. That's the story. They put us in the school. The Rothschilds. I know Jay Z back here, like, all oh, this shit gonna die now. I've been here for a year, my yeah. Dude, this is bad. This is bad. When he says I've been here for a year. What he means is they've not succeeded in killing me yet. The Jews, the Jews have not succeeded in killing me yet. You know, Kanye West's mom actually had a law named after her. As a matter of fact, she got plastic surgery, but her body was not capable of withstanding. Like her heart failed, I think, or something like that in the middle of it. And it is now a legal requirement before plastic surgery for you to have a physical to make sure that you are safe to have that plastic surgery done. It's called the D the Donda West Law, I think. You can look it up if you're curious. Kanye West claims that the doctor that did that, that surgery, that killed his mom, is Jewish. And he did it out of retribution against Kanye West for some perceived slight against the community or something, killed his mother. And he's convinced they're after him next. Seriously, he thinks he's going to die at the hands of a Jewish person. It's insane. The guy needs mental help. He doesn't like hearing that. Kanye, get help. Sadly, we can't watch that entire video, but Kanye West shows up to Alex Jones's show, decides to do a show, and he's describing the idea that he thinks that the Jews are coming to get him, that the Clintons, the Rothschilds, they're all connected, George Soros and everybody's all connected, and they're trying to kill Kanye West right now. This is from December 1st, 2022. It doesn't matter how on the spectrum you think I am, I have the right to speak out loud. That is our first- Yeah, absolutely. Speak out loud all you want, but expect to be canceled by your brand deals who don't want to be associated with that insane garbage first amendment and it's a shame that you have to be considered to be on the spectrum to have enough courage to speak out loud i do love my family yeah so kanye west convinced that he's autistic i don't believe it uh the doctor that diagnosed him said that he had bipolar disorder that is what I believe, especially based on the signs that I've personally seen. Delusions of grandiosity and things like that. I don't think it's about narcissism with this guy. It's just, you know, delusions of grandiosity, plain and simple. But 
you know, I'm not a doctor. I, I don't know his medical history. That's just my educated guess. Right. But I looked at every possible outcome. I've practiced Chinese water torture on myself. And what did that accomplish exactly? What what did he do that for? Why? I would I I would like skip along Malibu in front of my house and sing when the Clintons come to kill me. How is it going to be? What are they going to do to kill me? Wait a second. Netton, what do you have to say about this? Netton, don't want to say nothing. What do you even say to this? What do you even say to this? He brought a, an orange net and a bottle of yoo the chocolate drink, you know? And it was supposed to represent Netanyahu, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu, the leader of Israel. And he made fun of him the entire time. He was a puppeteer. He's playing a puppet show where the net was a Jewish person responding to what he had to say, basically. I mean, it doesn't get any more deeply racist and hateful and bigoted and disgusting than Kanye West. It really does not, short of being Hitler yourself. Not to mention the fact that he apparently doesn't have any idea where he would be in World War II. Kanye West apparently doesn't know how he would have ended up. He would be in a concentration camp just like the rest. You know why? Because he doesn't contribute to improving Aryan bloodlines. Hitler was not just anti-Jew. He was also a white supremacist and wanted to exterminate anybody that he didn't like, basically. Nothing. Don't want to say nothing. What I'm trying to get at here is, yay, <laughs> that I, I don't think the father of the future revolution against tyranny is Hitler. So, yeah, it goes on from there. I watched the whole interview and it was insane. The point is, Kanye is gone, dude. This guy's mind is just shot to pieces. If you don't know this guy on screen, he is Gavin McInnes. He started the Proud Boys and ran it as its leader for a long time. And you'll be interested to find he also started Vice News, believe it or not. But, uh, yeah, he's not really a part of Vice News anymore, obviously. But he decided to talk to Kanye and try to talk him out of his Jew-blaming spiral, basically. He said that once you start blaming the Jews for everything, it's a death spiral that ends in nonsense. Like, your, your life is not any different because there are Jewish people around. It, it's just not. Find the real source of the problem, which in Gavin McInnes's mind is Democrats, of course. But uh, anyway, just listen to what McInnes has to say to uh, Kanye here. Early December 2022. Uh, this sort of ethnomasochistic cultural suicide tend not really to be Jewish. I call them ginos, Jews in name only. It's Wild name. Jews in name only. Wild acronym. It's liberal elite whites you should have a beef with. Yeah, but I lump them all in together. That's what I did. That's how, okay, that's, that's the, good. That's why the tweet said that, Jewish people. I lump them all in together. All Jewish people. And he makes exceptions for individual Jewish people. Like Laura Loomer has a Jewish background. And she is friends with Kanye West because he knows that she's fighting the Jewish blah, 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 just like he is. That is psychotic. Think about doing that to a black person, someone from the black community. Imagine looking at the black community and saying they're dangerous, they're evil, they're subhuman, they're disgusting, they're wrong, they're this, they're that, they're whatever. And then picking one or two out and saying he's okay. He must have some white blood in him or something, you know. That one's okay over there. Imagine doing something as psychotic as that. Imagine for a moment. The statement Kanye West just made cannot be overstated or oversold. It was psychotic. Good. That's why the tweet said that, Jewish people. Okay. I mean, McInnes obviously feels like he ran into a brick wall just now. But this trait, like... You know, blacks are overrepresented in violent crime. 
But when you meet an individual black person, you don't apply that. You start with a fresh slate every time you meet someone. Do you do that with Jews? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this intervention isn't going very well. <laughs> he doesn't seem to even realize what he, like, wh where the logic failed. The black community is overrepresented in crime, and there are a variety of sociological reasons for that that I don't even want to get into right now. And Kanye West presumably knows those reasons. He knows that, you know, there's more poverty, there's less generational wealth, there's less ability, there's less social mobility, basically. Uh, there's more unconscious discrimination against that. Like, you can be the nicest guy in the world and be all in favor of black people, just completely, you know, you don't, you treat everybody like everybody else. But that unconscious bias slips in without you even realizing. And before you know it, you have, you know, a list of 10 resumes and you've picked nine whites. Why? They were all just as qualified. They were all just as intelligent. It's because of internal unaddressed bias that you're not even aware of tests have been done on this this is indisputable fact that this exists kanye has to know that he has to right he was involved in the civil rights movement to some degree for a while and what does he say when asked do you judge an individual jewish person on who they are not their ethnicity like you would with a black person? Start with a fresh slate every time you meet someone. Do you do that with Jews? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. He doesn't. Doesn't want anything to do with it. He doesn't care. All Jews, all, all Jews are evil, period. And he makes that pretty clear with his next line. They don't deserve to be in charge of everything because they don't put Christ and, and but how do you legend? So I guess uh, Jews and anybody else who doesn't put Christ first doesn't deserve to legislate anything. He's saying he wants to create a, a two tier society, one who is allowed to vote and legislate and be involved in politics at all. And when he says in control of anything, he doesn't just mean government. He means companies either. They should not be CEOs of companies ever if you don't accept Jesus as your savior. You are not allowed to be the CEO of a company. That's his position, really. I watched the whole interview. That's how he feels. Of everything because they don't put Christ. In, in but how do you legislate that? They need to work for Christians. Jews should work for Christians. I'll hire a Jewish person in a second. If I knew they weren't a spy and I could look through their phone and follow them to their house and have a camera all in their living room. <laughs> <laughs> if he could... Put a camera in their living room and file, follow them to their house and watch everything that they do. Then, uh, so I, he doesn't trust them is the point. He doesn't trust Jewish people, right? Not only does he want to make them second class citizens where they're allowed to work under the care and purview of a Christian, he wants to force them into like a surveillance state. Does it get more horrific and twisted than this? You know, a, a lot of Republican ideals very closely parallel Nazi ideals. Like, they both have problems with certain groups of people, and they both want to move the country toward a more fascist, you know, regime, that kind of thing. But Nazism is a new level. You can hit a low that is absolutely unreachable as a simple Republican. And it seems that Kanye has reached it. That is wild to watch, straight up. Check this one out, same interview. I think it's awesome for a presidential campaign. Yeah? To have so So he's talking about his presidential campaign, I guess. The one that's i suspended uh what i don't know i don't know what's happening with it yeah to have someone that's honest that understands the state of the world and that's ready to listen to what the american people need but hitler's got a pretty bad reputation <laughs> well who made that reputation that hitler made that reputation are you kidding me
was made by Jewish people. Well, the murdering Jews was a pretty big part of his bad reputation. Yeah, but and you know what? I'm sorry, man. I I I, I protest. The fact that they keep talking about the Jews being murdered by Hitler. Yes, that happened. Yes, it was terrible. And yes, they were the target demographic. But there were others, too. It, political prisoners of various sorts, trade unionists, socialists, people like that. He was bad for not just killing Jews, if you hate Jews, too. You should be at least, at the very least, outraged over... All of the other people that he killed. You should be outraged and horrified by the fact that he literally had a factory where people came in and went into the incinerators. He had a death factory. He had it industrialized. Death on an industrialized scale. Does that not scare the shit out of you? How can you possibly justify it? Even if you hate Jews. You know what? Even if you hate socialists. Even if you hate trade unionists and Jehovah's Witnesses and everybody that Hitler targeted, all of them, the fact that he normalized a death camp like that should be horrifying in its own right. Oh, and by the way, he targeted black people too. Just putting that out there for you. Some of it's incorrect. Also, the Holocaust is not the only Holocaust. Uh, th that doesn't make it better. Sure. Okay. And what does he mean that not... Not all of it's correct. Yes, it is. It is correct. Our modern understanding of the Holocaust and how it happened, how it played out, and, and all that stuff, it's accurate. I get so sick of hearing these ridiculous games that these people play to just try to wedge doubt in little by little. No, it's accurate, okay? He killed about 6 million Jews, give or take. I'll give him a buffer of maybe 100,000 on each end. Between 5.9 million and 6.1 million. Nazis kept impeccable records. Although they did line a lot of people up along mass graves that those people had just dug. And shot them. And they fell backwards into the graves. So, you know, it's hard to account for how many people that happened to. There were Hiwis, which were volunteer forces who came in to help the Nazi soldiers. Or just the police. And they were, you know, instructed to do the same thing, line people up along a big, long trench that, the, that those people had just dug. People who were about to be shot, they dug their own mass grave first, and then they lined them all up. While they're digging it, the Hiwis and the German police are getting absolutely drunk and getting close enough that, despite being drunk, can still fire the shot pretty accurately. And they were told to aim for the base of the skull, because if they aimed higher, there'd be an explosion. And if they aimed lower, then it wouldn't actually kill the person. You need to aim like right at the base of the skull to kill him. That was the expectation. That happened. And, again, if you don't like Jews, it happened to a lot more than just Jews. Apparently, Kanye doesn't believe it. I mean, he said that the numbers aren't accurate. Okay, but some of the numbers are accurate, right? Hitler did kill some Jews, didn't he? Some of them died at his hands. And even one is wrong. By the way, I'm wondering if anybody can answer this question for me. I've had this question for a while. Did Hitler ever kill somebody with his own hands, personally? I'm wondering if he pulled the trigger. He did it or if he always had someone else do it for him does anyone know the answer to that i've been looking for that answer for a while and it's been difficult to find surprisingly anytime you search the term did hitler kill anybody it, it gives a big explanation of you know all the people who died in the holocaust the point is kanye west is gone his mind is gone okay i haven't even gotten to the point of this story yet there was apparently a big explosion by Kanye West on uh, in Las Vegas over the Jews that we just watched a minute ago, wherever the hell that went. They can't touch me. Why? Because mm -hmm. God covered me. He covered me. And guess what, Trump? We ain't giving you support. Let's you get Larry out. Let's you get Jeff out. He's naming Jewish people that are around Trump, I guess. You understand what I'm saying? Because y'all... 
Y'all, y'all politicians think y'all gonna just get our for free. Oh, all of a sudden, because you got a mug shot, you with us now? No, no, what you gonna do for us? What they gonna do for us? Y'all done voted Democrat all these mother times. These y'all showing up at the LV show. These is colonizers. The French own 80% of the banks in Africa. Well, okay, I can agree with like that there's like a colonizing issue that's happened historically and is currently happening right now. I agree. Absolutely. The problem is that Kanye West, his information is insane. I don't know where he's getting his information from. It's not accurate, like any of it. Yeah, there's a colonism or a, a colonist problem or whatever, a colonialism problem. That's the word I was looking for. There's a colonialism problem, yes, and an imperialism problem. There are countries around the world right now that are pushing their way into places that they're not entitled to. Case in point, Russia into Ukraine or Israel into Gaza. They There would be world peace if not for those people that are power hungry and land hungry. But Kanye isn't talking about any of that. He has no idea what he's talking about. He heard some fast fact from some Telegram nutcase, some QAnon or, you know, anti-Semitic nutbag, and he's just repeating it. Simple as that. Oh, hey, it's Akon. What's it say? Akon defended Kanye West by calling the anti-Semitic comments a matter of opinion. Really? Akon? Come on, man. <sighs> Kanye made some pretty decent music, and I boycotted the dude. Um, God, I guess. Don't tell me I have to boycott Akon. That's sad, man. That is just straight up sad. All right, take a look here. Uh, so I guess Kanye apologized for, you know, his comment on Jews, surprisingly, after he absolutely shredded the Jewish community just last week in Las Vegas, apparently. He posted this on Instagram. It's a basically an apology in i think hebrew that's hebrew right and let me translate it for you it says well i'm not translating i'm reading someone else's translation translation says i sincerely apologize to the jewish community for my unplanned outburst caused by my words or actions it was not my intention to hurt or disrespect and i deeply regret any pain i may have caused I'm committed to starting with myself and learning from this experience to ensure greater sensitivity and understanding in the future. Your forgiveness is important to me, and I'm committed to making amends and promoting unity. Quote, unquote. So, I'm thinking one of two things happened here. He was in the public spotlight for anti-Semitism once again, and he doesn't like that spotlight. He doesn't want to be there anymore. So he thought that it was better to capitulate to the Jewish mafia or whatever the hell he thinks by apologizing for it. Or one of his social media managers just decided to post it anyways. Or, or here's a third option. Maybe he's been watching like a lot of far right propaganda. I mean, that's beyond a shadow of a doubt, he absolutely is watching far-right propaganda. Maybe the far-right nutcases that he's watching right now are pro-Palestine, and he's decided to do exactly what they wanted, which is whatever they tell him to. In this case, love Israel at, at any cost, no matter what, period. Personally, I don't conflate Israel and Jewish people. There were a bunch of Jewish people down there by Grand Central or in Grand Central who were wearing shirts that said not in our name and were protesting the Palestinian attacks. And I completely agree with those people. Israel, the country, has put a concerted effort into linking themselves with the Jewish community and cynically using the pain and suffering of people who endured the Holocaust or died in the Holocaust. They cynically use that event to hide behind. And they also use any mention, uh, any criticism of Israel whatsoever. They use that as evidence, if you will, of anti-Semitism. 
I don't know what's going on with the Israeli government right now. I don't know if it's even made up entirely of Jews or, or if it's all Jews. I don't know. But I can tell you that they are effectively doing the same things, spreading the same rhetoric, and encouraging the same extremism as other very extreme groups that we've seen in the past. That should tell you something. The I, I would say a lot of Jews do not agree with what Israel is doing right now, are just as disgusted by it as I am. Hard respect to those people, for real. Not easy to avoid the propaganda that is targeted at you by the Israeli government to turn you into a loyal soldier for whatever cause they come up with. So, anyways, Kanye is an absolute nutcase. He's back and forth on everything. I have no idea what he thinks or whatever. I, I honestly couldn't possibly care less. As long as the dude doesn't make president, he can sit in his little corner, his little bipolar corner, and just lose his <laughs> all on his own to his heart's content. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. This is just grotesque, man. I don't know what Kanye is going on about right now, but look, his name on Instagram is Kanye West. Kanye West. He's not even going by Ye on there. This guy needs help, seriously. And, and he's been offered help, and he's had help, and he refuses to take it now. Refuses to work with anybody or, or whatever. And it, it's truly disturbing. Truly disturbing. Anytime somebody suggests Kanye take his meds, it doesn't end well for him, seriously. Alex Jones was kind of doing an outro, and he said, this is crazy land, man. We're all crazy here. I'm crazy. You guys are crazy. Everybody's crazy here, you know. Kind of making it out like, oh, we're all nutcases because we uncovered true conspiracies that, you know, MK Ultra was real and blah, 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 whatever. That, that's the idea Alex Jones is going for. Just listen to how it played out. Hour number two, uncensored with yay. Nick Fuentes, I'm your guest host here in insane asylum world because the whole world's crazy. Not, all of us are nuts. This is this is Twilight Zone 2.0. We will be. So Twilight Zone 2.0, that means everyone thinks we're nuts, but everything that we predict comes true. Of course, it doesn't, but. That's the idea he's trying to convey, right? In a solemn world, because the whole world's crazy. Not all of us are nuts. This is this is Twilight Zone 2.0. We will be Don't right point back. Don't me when you say that. No, I'm talking about all of us. The whole world's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, this is the, everything, everybody's crazy. I, I, I believe that. I'm saying the guest host here because these guys are hosting. We'll be right back with hour number two. Kanye West is so ridiculously defensive when somebody calls him crazy. There are some negative feelings there somewhere right for some reason good luck trying to get somebody like that to take their meds with peace and love kanye take your meds bro next up rick scarborough evangelical extremist really doesn't like santa i mean the dude hates santa he feels the same way about the gay community as a matter of fact in recent clips, he went off on the LGBT community for looking gay. Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. He doesn't think people should look gay. We'll be right back. Don't forget to check out my Patreon and check out my website and email list for early access to uncensored, ad-free, complete videos. All links are in the description. Some interesting facts about Santa to consider. First, his name is spelled with the exact same letters that spell Satan. This is Rick Scarborough. He's a far-right extremist. I talk about this video pretty much every Christmas because it's just so ridiculous. It's worth taking a look at. And inevitably, throughout the year, he has a plethora of other insane, ridiculous stuff to lay down for us. So this year he's actually been pretty active. So let's talk about him. Let's do it. Let's talk about Rick Scarborough and his deep, unadulterated hate for Santa and of course for the LGBT community we'll get there I listened to his reasoning for not liking Santa coincidence perhaps except I do not believe that anything with God is accidental or coincidental 
What does Santa have to do with God? The connection between Santa and God was drawn by him. Perhaps you're thinking, well, preacher, you're way up too tight about this. Well, yeah, that is what I'm thinking. Absolutely. He's a mind reader. Just continue to listen and let's think it through. Okay. Secondly, Santa is given all the attributes of God. He is omniscient. He knows everything that every child is doing. He's omnipresent, allowing him to be in every store simultaneously around the world in a single night. Yeah, he's a fantastical creature. First of all, my family, actually, having grown up Jehovah's Witness, they gave that first argument against Santa or against Christmas. Santa is an anagram for Satan. What does that have to do with anything? Why does anybody care? I mean, I can rearrange any word to make any word, honestly. I can rearrange the letters in the Bible to spell out, I don't know, something about Jews being killed in World War II or whatever. Like, it's not surprising when you arrange letters to be a new word. It's just ridiculous to me that this dude actually believes this stuff, presumably. Now, on top of that, Jehovah's Witnesses did not actually give this last argument that he's giving here, where he's omniscient, omnipresent, and he represents God or whatever. They didn't give that argument. He's just a fantastical creature, that's all. It's it's fantasy genre story. It's about a guy who can fly everywhere and be everywhere at once and give kids things that they want all instantaneously. You know, Peter Pan could fly. Uh, there used to be a ring that, before it was thrown into the volcano of Mordor, did I get that correct? That would make you invisible. Never saw the movies, never read the books. It's all just a fantasy. You know, it's just fun. It's just imaginative stuff. He is entirely too uptight about this subject. Entirely too uptight. And he's omnipotent. There's no toy that he cannot create and provide out of thin air if he decides the child is worthy of it. The only problem with this is it's all a lie. Well, sure, it's all a lie, but it's a fun lie. It's a lie that kids like taking part. It's a part, it's a part of culture is what it is, ultimately. It's not even really a lie. It's just a fun part of culture. If a kid really put the question to somebody, is Santa real? The answer would be no, and they'd be like, oh, okay, you're right, yeah. Usually it spreads around the schoolhouse like long be or the schoolyard before the parents have a, an opportunity to mention it. You know, some kid comes up with the idea, oh, this is fake. And just like that, it spreads like wildfire and everybody in the school realizes it's fake. This is entirely too uptight. This, it's all a lie. And that allows for a transition to the most indicting part of the Santa myth. The entire case for Santa is built upon a works foundation. He's keeping a list of who's naughty and nice, and he checks it twice. And only if a child is truly deserving according to their works do they merit the gift or gifts they requested teaching a works system. Okay, so the Bible offered two explanations for what it took to make it to heaven, right? Actually, it offered three, but they ignore the third. Let's go with the first two. Uh, the first one is a faith-based system, right? You just have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and just like that, boom, you're saved. The second is a works-based system. You have to, like Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, you have to knock on doors, and you have to live a certain way. You can't be gay. You can't do this. You can't swear and blah, blah, blah. You can't celebrate Christmas. That's against the rules, and if you do, you're not making it into heaven. That, that deal, right? That's a works-based system, what he appears to be like promoting in this video right here. The third and correct view would be the one that Jesus himself espoused while he was on earth. Jesus said, when asked what it takes to get into the kingdom of God, he said, I'll have sheep on the left, goats on the right. I'm not sure if that's the correct order, what, one way or another. And he'll say to the sheep, you gave me food when I was hungry. You gave me water when I was thirsty. You gave me a place to sleep when I was homeless, basically. And the sheep said, when did we do that, Lord? And he said, what you did to the least of my brothers and sisters, you did to me. What it takes to get into heaven 
into the kingdom of God is being a good person, providing for the poor, feeding the hungry, making sure that they have what they need, giving people, giving of yourself to others. That is what's required. Loving your neighbor, favoring them, being doing everything you can to make their lives better for the sake of making it better, being a pillar of your community and doing your best to help others. That is how you get into the kingdom of God. Boom. Now, this guy here says part of the deal, apparently, is don't celebrate Christmas. He also says you can't be gay. If you're gay, you won't make it into the kingdom of God. I'm sorry, man. That's not what Jesus said. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as this guy should be concerned, Jesus was the authority in that moment while he was on earth on what God wanted. If Jesus didn't say it, it's irrelevant to me. Teaching a works system. This is antithetical to the gospel narrative. It's really not. It's really not antithetical is what he meant to say i don't know antithetical i don't know what he he said there it's not antithetical to the gospel message uh, meaning it does not contradict the gospel message at all people just having fun and enjoying things you know what jesus would like i'll tell you what jesus would appreciate he would appreciate people showing love to each other and giving gifts to each other even when they're destitute themselves, even when they're poor, they'll scrounge together everything that they have to give their friend a gift. I mean, there's a story about, I think it's called the gift of the Magi, right? Guy sells his hair to purchase a watch for somebody. Or I, I know I'm going to mess this up. I forget what it is. And the person what, cut off their hand and sold it to get a wig? or I, I don't remember what the story is. Anyway, two people got something for each other that they no longer needed because they sold the original items to buy the gifts. That's what it's about, really. Giving of yourself freely. That's it. Helping people in need. No matter what you have, share it. That's what it was about. Anyways, um, that, that just flies right over the guy's head. Doesn't care. Doesn't even... what He certainly knows about the parable of the sheep and goats, right? Why does he zero in on the parts that are hateful and completely ignore Jesus' message when he calls himself a Christian? Anyway, believe it or not, there's more to this story. December 3rd, 2023, he came out here, made a fool of himself even further. Check this one out. Sin often begins manifesting itself even by the, the, the transformation of your characteristics. Transformation of your characteristics. Okay. He's saying you turn into a grotesque monster, basically, when you sin. Well, I mean, I sin on the regular, so... And I don't see myself as a grotesque monster, am I? I don't think I'm a grotesque monster. But okay, go on. I'm listening. Characteristics. And about 80% of the time, before a homosexual opens his mouth, you can see... By the look on his face. Before a homosexual opens his mouth, you can see the look on his face. That he's, I won't say the word gay. It almost slipped out. Uh, a sodomite will always reflect it in his countenance. And if he doesn't naturally, he'll learn it by those he hangs around with. That's insane. He's saying that gay people act a certain way, and you can tell. And it's not even how they act. It's simply what they look like. He said before they even say a word to you, you can look at them and understand that they're gay. Simply disgusting. What is going through this guy's head? Absolutely absurd. There are a billion people that I know that I was absolutely blown away to find out were gay. They're people that you would never suspect any given population has about 10% gay people in it. This guy has about 10% of the people in his life that he interacts with on a daily basis, you know, cashier at the register or restocker who hands him the, the box of, I don't know, rice aroni off the top shelf. I don't know what this dude buys. Or toilet paper, or whatever, using the blue bears. I mean... All of those people, about 10% of them, one out of 10, are gay. Can he tell me, out of the hundreds of people he's seen this week, 
which one of those people were gay. In fact, which 10, which 15, which 20 of those couple hundred people were gay. Of course he can't because it's complete made up nonsense. Sin disfigures you. That's absurd. Also, he said the word gay almost slipped out. When he says the word gay, he has to go out on this huge tirade every single time about how the word gay really means happy, and he's really upset that the gay people stole it. They're really calling themselves happy people, and he really doesn't like that because he liked the word gay, apparently, and uh, he just wants to call them homosexuals. By the way, he called them sodomites. You know Sodom was destroyed because of its ill treatment of the poor, right? Not because of homosexuality. Had nothing to do with that. But okay. Here's another clip from him. Same day. Check it out. We are spending billions of dollars to keep these sodomites alive. And we should out of compassion. But it could be cured overnight. Sorry about AIDS. HIV. We're spending billions of dollars on HIV research. And he says shortly thereafter, we should because it's the right thing to do or something. That's that's brand new. I have heard him talk about this subject a number of times. I have never heard him say that it's the right thing to research HIV. To my knowledge, up until this very moment, this guy wanted anybody with HIV to die because they were guilty despite the fact that there are completely straight people. I mean, he shouldn't be viewing it this way anyways, but even fitting myself into his mindset, which is a a grotesque, disgusting place that I don't want to stay at very long, so let's make this quick. Even fitting in his mindset here, you should still want to research the cure for HIV. There should still be a solution because gay people are not the only victims of this condition. By the way, uh, HIV is actually making a lot of progress. They're, you know, Researchers are doing a really good job developing new drugs and stuff to help deal with that. But would you believe it if I told you that uh, 2015, I think, he said that they would never find a cure for HIV. Never. Until HIV was outlawed. At which point a Christian or a probably Jewish person would find the cure. Not an atheist. It wouldn't be an atheist to find it. Be a Christian or a Jewish person. Okay. That's that's Rick Scarborough for you. We should, out of compassion. But it could be cured overnight by repentance. Oh, it can? It can be cured overnight over repentance? So you're telling me if you prayed to God, please cure my HIV, then it would just be cured? Is that what he's saying? Well, if this is true, then go to a hospital and do it. Help the people there. Let's figure this out. There are people needlessly dying right now. Let's get this going. Come on. If he's capable of doing this, I assume he's capable of curing cancer as well. Just make a stop on down to the cancer ward and do start doing the curing, right? Why doesn't he do that? It's because he doesn't actually believe this is true. He knows that he's lying to this crowd right now. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, deep down, either way, he knows that he's lying. By a change of lifestyle, and there would be a certain death among those who've been practicing, but I believe God would so reveal himself that he'd find the cure. And and instead of just keeping them alive with drugs, they'd find the genuine cure if they hadn't already aborted the one that had the cure. Right. Uh, Another swing at abortion. Because if we didn't abort anybody at all, if there were never abortions, no matter what, including abortions for fetuses who literally did not have a brain, there was simply water where a brain was supposed to be, including fetuses who were in the process of killing the mother through some illness like preeclampsia or something like that, like, I don't know, it happens, or through an illness like, or through a condition like an ectopic pregnancy. All of the things I just listed require abortions. Yeah, those babies, as he would call them, totally could have had the cure to AIDS. And here we are aborting them. This guy is just depraved, as depraved as it gets, honestly. Let me give you a little um, background on the guy if you're unfamiliar. 2015, he released this video about the gay community. So 
where in 2024... So that's nine years. Dude's been talking about this for nine years. Honestly, he's been talking about it for a lot longer than that. It's been the primary focus of his religious beliefs, his sermons and stuff for a long, long time. But 2015, he comes out and he says this. Check it out. By the way, um, before we watch, Grids, G-R-I-D-S, is a name that was used for a very short time as a term for HIV, until we understood what it was and how it works and everything else. It stood for gay-related infectious disease syndrome or something. I don't even know exactly, but GRIDS. Uh, That's what they called it, gay-related infectious disease or something. The AIDS epidemic was still being called GRIDS in 1992, and I... No, I don't think that's true, but okay, whatever. ...grids in 1992, and I had been researching that new epidemic because I believed, as I do today, and rest assured, if I'm being monitored, as I often am when I speak, this is the only thing they'll carry on the website, People for the American Way, from this speech. (laughs) That's funny. Uh, People for the American Way is Right Wing Watch. They're subsidiary companies. Right Wing Watch is a subsidiary of People for the American Way. Jerry Falwell Sr. absolutely hated people for the American way. Anyway, they they all do the same thing. But yeah, of course, this is the part anyone's going to talk about. Why would we talk about you reading the Bible verse about Daniel, whatever? Why would we care about any of that? We care about the fact that you are spreading vitriolic, vile hate against the LGBT community. You can say whatever the hell you want on your little platform there, period, full stop. You can say whatever you want on your platform, but you can't expect us not to criticize it. You're using your free speech. I'm going to use mine. And he's seemingly complaining about that. By the way, just draw a little distinction here. I'm not complaining about his right to say what he's saying in this venue. I'm complaining about what he's saying. He's complaining about the fact that people are allowed to criticize him or that they do criticize him. That's what he's complaining about. You're seeing the difference here, right? It's subtle, but it's there. This kind of distinction between different types of criticism is oftentimes lost in the conversation because, you know, right-wingers like it to be. They want it to be. I criticize you for what you're saying about gay people. You criticize me for criticizing you. You criticize me for not allowing you to say what you want. You are trying to silence my speech, which is, which is absolutely not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to keep, prevent you from talking in front of your church. I'm trying to make people realize that you're a psycho. That's all. I believe that grids was God's judgment on a sinful generation. I mean, I don't apologize for that. Is it an unforgivable sin? Of course not. In fact, I believe God would probably give us the cure for AIDS today if we put our foot down and said, we no longer tolerate this. We're not going to fund it with health care. We're going to hold you accountable. I believe if we started repenting across this country, some sharp, probably Christian or Jewish. Re- some sharp, probably Christian or Jewish person. Okay. Researcher would find the AIDS cure. Because God's a God of grace, they may find it anyway. By the way, you, you've probably seen a lot of jump cuts with the black thing. Yeah, I edited this because I wanted to make it shorter. I'm just cutting pauses out. I'm not even like cutting out speech or anything relevant. It's just, God, he pauses for so long. This video was like two minutes long originally. I cut it down and turned it into like a minute, minute and a half. So, yeah, that's why you're seeing a lot of jumps. Researcher would find the AIDS cure. Because God's a God of grace, they may find it anyway. You mean because researchers exist, they might find it anyway. Look, I got to put this on the line real quick. Let me just explain something, okay? I hear this all the time from flat earthers who complain about NASA. They say, why are we spending, I don't know what it is, $3 billion a year or whatever NASA's budget is? What is NASA's budget? Okay, $27 billion per year, a 7.1 increase over 2023. 
Biden proposed that much for them. I don't know if they'll get it or not, but okay, let's just, for the sake of argument, let's say NASA gets $27 billion a year, right? Where do you think that $27 billion goes? Do you think that when Biden gives $27 billion to NASA, they load that money up onto a shuttle and launch it to the moon where it then sits until it decays for eternity? Do you think that's what's happening? The money is not being spent on the moon. The money isn't being spent on Mars. The money is being spent on hard workers in the United States. Researchers and you know engineers and all kinds of people, artists and stuff, who are working on ways to innovate and create and build. And as a matter of fact... Yes, NASA commonly innovates and creates and builds for things related to space. But you know what else they innovate, create, and build? A lot of the time when they innovate things or create things that were intended for space, we find a use for them here on Earth. So not only is that $27 billion still circulating around our economy, the money still has velocity, it's still going around to different people is still going in people's pockets who are then spending it on various things, restaurants, you know, the money goes to the waitress who then spends it on this and that it goes all over the place. So not only is the money not going to the moon, it's also extremely valuable for that research to exist in the first place. It's extremely valuable for us to learn this stuff that we learn from NASA research. It seems like a little thing, but you know that ribbed part of the road where you're driving along on an interstate and you go a little bit too too far to the right and you start hearing the like the, you know, the bumping or whatever. That's a part of the road that that has like holes in it or whatever to try to wake you up. That was invented by NASA. It's all little things, you know. Now, this guy isn't talking about NASA. He's talking about the cure for HIV. But the point stands. It's all the same stuff. That money is not going into a needle and then being injected into somebody's arm. And if it doesn't work, what can you do? That's I get you know, we just burned through four million dollars by sticking it in somebody's arm and it's gone now. We we just don't have that money anymore. That is not what's happening. That money has velocity. It goes From person to person, all of the doctors, all the researchers, all the innovators and engineers and everybody along the line, vaccinologists and everything, they all get paid from these companies and they take their money and they spend it on things. They buy rent, they buy groceries, they pay for their car, they have insurance, they have the whole nine yards. All of the money that he's complaining about that goes into vaccine research is actually going to other Americans that are studying this. And in the process of studying this, we are learning how the human body works more clearly. There is an insane amount of value to the money that we put into medical research and space research, both. I don't know what the number is. I I hesitate to even say it. It's something like for every dollar we put into NASA, we get a dollar fifty back or something to that effect. I don't know what it is, but it's not zero. We're getting value out of what we put into it. It's extremely valuable to invest in NASA, whether you're a flat earther or not, and it's valuable to invest in vaccine research. Check out this next one, mid-June 2015. This one is him acting like he's persecuted by gay people, if you can believe it. Check this out. These folks uh, send in their activists uh, with their lawyers when they find there's a Christian who's principled and not willing to participate in any kind of sanctioning of same-sex marriage, and, and, and they sue them until they go into bankruptcy. Okay, I'm trying to follow the logic. So is he saying that a Christian who is not willing to participate in a gay marriage is sued into bankruptcy for it? I, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm assuming he's talking about Kim Davis. In that case, she was a public official who had a job to do. The laws of her area said the people in her district were allowed to get married if they are gay. Her job is to issue marriage licenses to people. Full stop. That's all she had to do. 
hand the license over and sign it saying, yes, these people requested a license. That's her job. I don't care if she has a moral stand against it or not. If she does, quit. That is the law in your state. If you can't follow the law in your job, you shouldn't have that job, straight up. So uh, I assume he's talking about Kim Davis here, but I would not be surprised if he believed that somebody was being persecuted because some poor pastor was being forced to hold a gay wedding, to host a gay wedding in this fictional scenario that he's making up. Uh, who knows what he's even talking about exactly. They go into bankruptcy. Uh, in fact, the New Mexico Supreme Court, in ruling on the case there, said that... that I don't know what case he's talking about. Uh, participating in the sanction of same-sex marriage was the, quote, price of citizenship in the United States. I'm sorry, what? What was that? Listen again. Bankruptcy. Uh, in fact, the New Mexico Supreme Court, in ruling on the case there, said that that uh, participating in the... By the way, did you notice he didn't name the Supreme Court case? He didn't give us any information about how we can trace it back and read about it to any degree. He just said, a Supreme Court case in New Mexico said, blah. Okay? Tell me about this supposed New Mexico court case that you conveniently decided not to name there said that that uh, participating in the sanction of same-sex marriage was the quote price of citizenship in the United States so participating in the sanctioning of gay marriage is the price of citizenship in the US uh, no I don't remember that being said I don't know you can have your own opinions feel free believe what you want and I will believe what I want, which is that you're a scumbag if you're opposed to gay marriage. But I don't know what the hell you're talking about. The Supreme Court of New Mexico allegedly legislated, that's what he's implying here at the very least, legislated that people were not, gotta have a hair in my eye, that people, or an eyelash or something, that people were, like, citizens, U.S. citizens were mandated to accept gay marriage that's what he's saying okay we, we that we know uh, what's coming and uh we're simply being preemptive and saying no matter what the cost we, we understand and we weigh the cost we are not going to bow we're not going to bend and if necessary we will burn okay so he took presumably a situation that like do doesn't exist at all. I don't know of any situation in which a pastor was forced to marry a gay couple against his wishes. Nobody would stand for that. Nobody would try to force it or, or push that or, or whatever. Nobody cares, okay? There are plenty of gay pastors even who are willing to marry you. There are plenty of pastors out there who will do the job. There's only one county clerk that can issue that marriage license. Now, I think that that couple had to go out of state, but she was in their district. She was supposed to be their county clerk that issued that marriage license. Uh, Kim Davis was all the way back in the day. This guy is twisting what few facts there are on his side, which is basically zero, into something where he's the victim of every situation and he's ready to burn. He is ready to be burned alive before he marries a gay couple. Okay, great, fine. Fantastic for you. Nobody's asking you to do that, to burn alive or to marry a gay couple, but okay, if that's your stand, stand there as long as you want. I'm going to sit over here in normal town while you're over there in crazy town. Dude needs help. Okay, desperately. It's insane. He actually went down a guy named Andrew Womack's uh, YouTube channel. Unfortunately, I don't have time to cover it right now, but the idea of the video on this is that he's desperately trying to build a network of pastors who will run for public office. Now, the right is actually losing in the United States at the moment, so I wouldn't worry too much. I think we're going to be fine. But this is who we're fighting against, guys. Most importantly, you must get out and vote. You must. If you don't vote, his vote counts. If you don't cancel his out, then his vote counts and yours doesn't.
You have to get out there and vote. It is so important. Again, don't don't interpret this as a situation that's like down and gloomy or something. It's simply not. We are succeeding. We are making progress. The LGBT community has made exponential pro- uh, progress over the years. But you still got weird little nutter butters running around talking about Santa and how evil he is. Talking about gay people and what they look like and stuff. Weird that he's studying the looks of a gay person. But that's neither here nor there. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'm fascinated by it. This guy is terrible. Tell me what you think. Next up, Bill Nye debated Congressman Marsha Blackburn on climate change back in 2014. How'd the debate hold up after all these years? It's bad, but in an entertaining way. What are these people gonna say for themselves as it gets more obvious and undeniable? This video is a fascinating watch and a piece of history. A piece of embarrassing history for Marsha Blackburn. We'll be right back. Don't forget to check out my Patreon and check out my website and email list for early access to uncensored, ad-free, complete videos. All links are in the description. Skeptics say the forecasts of doom and gloom are overblown. After you adjust for the fact that there's so many more people living in so many more places, there's no change in weather-related damages. This guy is from an organization called the Cato Institute. I looked it up, and as it turns out, it's a far-right think tank, quote-unquote. This video is 10 years old, at least at this point, and it's a video of Bill Nye debating Marsha Blackburn on whether or not climate change is real. Now, going back 10 years and looking at what people were arguing at the time is fascinating to watch and it doesn't surprise me at all that they'd get somebody from the cato institute really the cato institute a right-wing think tank on to tell them that it's really not that dangerous just a joke dude these people will be viewed as monsters in the future truthfully they'll be viewed as possibly as bad as hitler responsible for countless deaths because of what they said and did knowingly in my opinion They'll be viewed very negatively. But anyway, and it's not even that far off. You know, we're going to have to deal with this problem one way or another. Before watching the debate, though, between these two, Bill Nye and Marshall Blackburn, I do want to say I th- I don't I think we're going to get out of this jam with climate change. I think we're going to get out of it. The key to this is innovating our way out. OK, I don't think that it's the kind of thing that we can like slowly reduce and improve here and there. We're going to have to come up with technologies that are capable of accomplishing the goals that we need. And I I don't know if you guys knew this, but we already have all the technology that we need to go 100% green, carbon neutral. We don't need to use coal plants or oil fields or any of that other stuff anymore. We don't need it. It's possible to run nuclear power plants or wind plant, you know, wind power, or uh, hydroelectric dams, or geothermal energy, a, a billion different options to use that don't use fossil fuels. Fossil fuels will eventually run out at some point, and they are destroying the planet. We need to switch. We need to. And do you know how much it would cost to switch for the United States, go completely carbon neutral? We could outfit our entire infrastructure in the United States for $6 trillion, less than the cost of the Iraq war. Instead of killing people in Iraq, we could have outfitted our entire system as energy neutral, or I'm sorry, as a carbon neutral. Not at the time. We didn't have the technologies for it, but the point stands. Our debt is $30 trillion or somewhere in there right now. For $6 trillion, we could go completely carbon neutral, And then we could take all of the oil that we're digging out of the ground, 16 billion barrels per year, I think, or something, and sell them to other countries and make tons of money and be energy independent. Why the hell are we not doing this? You know why we're not doing this, in my opinion? Fossil fuel industries. I cannot think of another reason. There is no other explanation for why I'm sitting here watching a debate between Bill Nye and Marsha Blackburn about whether or not it's even real. With that being said, 
Let's listen. This is from 2014. Bill Nye and Marsha Blackburn, welcome both of you to Meet the Press. Good, Good to be with you. Thanks, David. I'm kind of unhappy about with Meet the Press about the fact that they even invited this debate to take place. This shouldn't have even happened. The debate, you know, the debate is over. There's no reason to debate this anymore at all. So here was uh, the Guardian newspaper after all of the flooding in the UK, and here's the headline, climate change is here now, it could lead to global conflict, yet the politicians squabble. In the scientific community, this is not really a debate about whether climate change is real. The consensus is that it is. Uh, the majority of those who believe, in fact, that it is caused by humans, there are certainly some in the scientific community who don't believe that's the case. Uh there are certainly members of the scientific community who don't believe that. Who? Are you talking about scientists that are actually literally employed by fossil fuel uh, like companies like Exxon and BP and stuff? Is that who you're talking about? The broad consensus, 99% of scientists agree that this is a problem. As a matter of fact, you don't need to look at this politicized environment or these scientists that we have today, even though they're way more educated and trained in this area than we have been in human history. You can look at newspaper clippings from a hundred years ago that were talking about this. One day, far in the future, fossil fuels could cause a problem for mankind. And who are skeptical about uh, some of those conclusions. But nevertheless, there is still this level of consensus. My question to begin with both of you is in this moment, of this this kind of extreme weather moment is it creating new urgency to act it absolutely should well now i'll start with you well i would say yeah and what i've always said we need to do everything all at once and this is an opportunity for the united states to innovate to be the world leader in new technologies that if you could invent a better battery a better way to store electricity you would change the world um, we have that stuff now. It was invented. We have what we need to be carbon neutral now. We don't have to in our. It, we don't really have to innovate our way out of it anymore. Not really. We have to build it. We have to do it. Again, as Bill Nye says, we need to be the world leader. He says that because if we're the world leader in something, we're the tip of the spear. We are the the leaders. In the pack, we get a lot of the contracts and the money, and people look to us for advice. You know, it makes the United States stronger by doing so. And what does Marsha Blackburn want? Does she want a stronger America? And if you were to do that uh, in a way that you could manufacture it and export it, you would also do very well financially. Congresswoman, is there new urgency to act? You've heard the president in, in drought-stricken California saying that these weather emergencies, in effect, are creating the conditions that government has to act. By the way, a quick note about Marsha Blackburn, if you didn't know. I believe I'm going to fact-check this, and if, I, if it stays in, then you know it's true. If you are hearing this right now, this is true. I believe that she's the one that came up with the term, what is a woman, originally. I think it was during a Supreme Court hearing to determine if Ketanji Brown Jackson was qualified or something. They asked her what a woman is. That was Marsha Blackburn, and that's when the entire trend caught fire. And David, I think that what it brings to mind is how we utilize the information that we have. And we all know... Wait, it... it it depends on how we utilize information we have. What? What is he talking or what's she talking about here? And we all know, and I think that Bill would probably agree with this. Neither he nor I are a climate scientist. He is an engineer and actor. I am a member of Congress. That's absolutely correct. So you know what you do in that case, since you're not an expert, I'm not an expert, and Bill Nye isn't an expert. Turn to the scientists. Ask them to lend you their expertise and tell you their thoughts on the subject. People who do know this stuff like the back of their hand have things to contribute. And what's Marsha Blackburn doing? She's lighting those contributions on fire. She does not care. She's making it out like, I'm not an expert. He's not an expert. That means it's a complete toss-up. I can say whatever I want. He can say whatever I want. It's equally as valid. No, 
Scientists have spoken and is absolutely unequivocally true. Climate change is happening. It's so embarrassing to see what was happening 10 years ago. Marsha Blackburn will be viewed as one of the most evil human beings in human history, in my opinion. She'll be up there. And what we have to do is look at the information that we get from climate scientists. As you said, there is not agreement around the fact of exactly what is causing this. Even the Yes, there is. There is agreement over what's causing it. And there was agreement then. As a matter of fact, there was agreement in the early 1900s over what was going to cause climate change. Higher CO2 and methane emissions. Again, she's just trying to introduce doubt. That's it. She's trying to make you think that there's another alternative possibility or whatever. Either way, I don't care if there's something else causing it. It needs to be dealt with one way or another, right? Exactly what is causing this. Even the president's own science and technology office uh, head, Mr. Holdren, says no one single weather event is due specifically to climate change. So... Yeah, that's how it works. Climate is an overall picture of individual weather events in a specific area. Of course, not one any individual weather event is the result of climate change. Again, her whole goal is to introduce doubt. She just wants you to think that everything's a toss-up and that there's conflict in the community. There isn't. There simply isn't. There wasn't then either. 2014, okay, Obama was the president at the time. I remember them talking about this all the way back then, even though I wasn't politically involved, still kind of young. It drives the policy to look at cost-benefit analysis, what we do about it, and the impact that U.S. policy would have in a global environment. Well, and that well there's not going to be a U.S. economy if we don't fix this problem, so there's that. And that's a, another question that I want to get to. But there is consensus, as you say, Congresswoman, there is some uh, skepticism about the degree to which humans may cause climate change. Or can you specifically say an emergency, uh, rather a weather event can be blamed on climate change? Some disagreement about that within the UK. Nevertheless, within the scientific community, there is consensus, uh, Bill Nye, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, among the scientists themselves on both of those questions. Yeah, scientific consensus. We don't have to wonder. Even back then, we knew. It's all about doubt. This is the exact same tactic, by the way, that flat earthers use. The goal isn't to present a new model that describes what is happening that is contrary to the model that we are using right now. They're not offering us a new set of explanations, of overarching ideas. What they're offering, they're offering to poke little holes. They just want to poke little holes in the existing explanation. And those holes that they poke, sometimes they don't even go through. Sometimes it's just nonsense. It bounces right off. Sometimes a couple of people will think that it ran through that paper anyways. They're trying to poke holes in things and cause problems and, and create doubt. That's the goal here. When I say they, I'm talking about the climate change deniers within Congress and the Senate, within government in general. That's who I'm talking about specifically and in the press. These people just want to make you think that there's more to it than there really is. No, everybody understands this perfectly well. Flat earthers cannot offer an overarching model. Climate change denialists or whatever cannot offer an overarching model to explain the rise in CO2 and methane to explain the reason why polar ice caps are falling apart, why, you know, uh, creatures are going extinct, why we used to see bugs hit our windshield and we don't anymore, things like that. There's no overarching description from them about what's happening right now. Something's happening. There's things that we can visually verify personally. And for the past, I don't know, hell, didn't, uh, I think Carl Sagan spoke in front of Congress about climate change in the 1980s, didn't he? 1985. I thought it was that date. It, it was sticking out in my head. But yeah, 1985, he spoke to Congress about climate change. We knew it's, we've known it was happening for the past 
45 years. Is that right? Wait. No, I'm sorry. 40 years. 40 years. We've known it was happening for the past 40 years. And we've also known what was causing it for the past 40 years. Exactly what was causing it. Here we have Marsha Blackburn poking those holes like a flat earther. Just doing everything she can to poke those little holes, you know? Figure out... Oh, look, there's a little spot right here I can poke. Poke! That's what she's doing. That's her whole thing. She's not offering solutions. She's not offering competing models. She's not telling us how she knows the information that she knows. She's simply trying to poke holes. That's it. She is, honestly, in my opinion, she is going down as one of the most reviled evil people on planet Earth for this interview right here. Eventually. Give it about 50 years and people will be disgusted with what she did. How old is Marsha Blackburn? She's still in Congress, by the way. She's 71. Okay. By the time that rolls around when she is an absolutely grotesque, evil human being and everybody recognizes her for that, she'll be dead. Unfortunately, I wish that she could live to see the day. She, I mean, obviously, like, why would she care about the future? She just doesn't care. She's going to go with her oil baron buddies who are also in their 70s or 80s who want to get richer and more powerful and influential. And they'll be gone before it's a problem anyway. So who cares? Get rich or die trying, right? As they say. Well, I got to say, once again, uh, what people are doing is introducing the idea that scientific uncertainty, in this case about cold weather events in what we call back east, uh, are, is the same as uncertainty about the whole idea of climate change. And this is uh, unscientific, it's not, it's not logical, it is right. creating doubt. It is uh, a way, apparently, uh, that the fossil fuel indus industry has dealt with uh, our politics. And this is not, this is not good. Everybody, uh, you don't, this is not, uh, you don't need a PhD in climate science to understand what's going on. That things, that we have overwhelming evidence that climate is changing, that you cannot tie any one event to that is not the same as doubt about the whole thing. But is the issue, Congresswoman, the cure or the disease and what's worth? What's worse? Here, here's the Atlantic. Wait, is the issue the cure or the disease? I don't understand. So what, what, what would the cure be? I guess is, is he saying is the issue using clean energy methods of like power generation like hydroelectric dams and, and wind and solar power that is an issue to him apparently for some reason is it that or is it the problem which is climate change um it's climate change what why did he even ask such a question magazine on some of the views within your party within the republican party on global warming conservative policy positions often seem to be conflated or confused with rejection of the consensus that the planet has been warming due to human carbon emissions of the many republican members of congress i know personally the vast majority do not reject the underlying science of global warming the catch conservatives believe many of the policies put forward to address the problem will lead to unacceptable levels of economic hardship i don't care you know what else leads to economic hardship not having a planet to live on. That leads to a lot of economic hardship, uh, for one thing. And for another thing, no, it would not lead to economic hardship. As a matter of fact, it would be incredibly stimulating to the economy for the government to simply spend $2 billion, which is a third of what we need to outfit our entire power grid in a renewable or with renewable sources. You know where that money would go? Do you think that it would be you think that we'd put a windmill in the ground like a wind turbine and we would pop the top on that that wind turbine because they're really tall. Right. So you go to the very top, take a little screwdriver and you kind of pry the top open. Right. The top flings off and you take a duffel bag and you just pour three trillion dollars into that thing. And then drop a match you think that's what's happening you think that's what people are doing that money is going into the economy it's stimulative it helps people what do you mean economic hardship that doesn't make any sense and they know this these people you can't convince me they don't know this conservatives many conservatives look 
weasel words. Shouldn't be using weasel words ever. Specify who you're talking about every time, like I did earlier. Conservatives believe many of the policies put forward to address the problem will lead to unacceptable levels of economic hardship. Which conservatives believe that? We should pick them out and we should talk to them. What part of money having velocity do you consider to be economic hardship? Tell me where in that process you think economic hardship fits exactly. Just absurd. The fix can be very expensive in the short term for long-term gain. In the short term, it would be very expensive for the U.S. government, which we always borrow against. Well, I think that what you have to do is look at what that warming is. And when you look at the fact that we have gone from 320 parts per million, 0.032 to 0.040, 400 parts per million. Yeah, you know what other numbers we're dealing with? A blood alcohol level from 0.7, no, I'm sorry, 0.07 to 0.09 that's almost no increase at all right but it's the difference between drunk driving and legally sober driving i mean even though you're not exactly sober there is a big difference between those numbers we live in an extremely delicate ecosystem which just got turned upside down by us by you marcia blackburn as a matter of fact and all of your policies giving subsidies to and doing everything that you could for the oil industry. It was turned upside down, and now we have to deal with it. One tiny little itty-bitty number that's nearly insignificant to you, it seems so small, can change everything you do is realize it's very slight. Now, there is not consensus, and you can look at the latest IPCC report and look at... There is consensus. There was then, too. Dr. Lindzen from MIT, his rejection of that, or Judith Curry, who recently, right. from Georgia Tech. There... Yeah, I don't know who she's talking about. I don't know if those people are even real. Even if they are real, I don't know if they denied climate change, that they, they, they denied some report, or they denied what? I don't know. Did she just completely make this up? I have no idea. But we knew at the time that climate change was a problem. She is lying. Is not consensus there. I think what we have to do. Well, hold on. I just is, have to interrupt you. I'm sorry, Congressman. Let me just interrupt you because it's not. Sure. You can pick out particular skeptics, but you can't really say, can you, that the, the hundreds of scientists around the world who have looked at this have gotten together. Thousands, tens of thousands conspired to manipulate data and that industry folks like PG&E here's PG&E's website its current website right see what she's doing here she's trying to introduce doubt it's all about pushing doubt down people's throats she picked out a few examples of people who honestly are likely made up I have no idea if they you know are part of a right-wing think tank or if they agree with it or what I don't know or if they even exist I have no clue so she just starts listing off names like she's smart, and suddenly people are expected to believe her, completely ignoring the fact that people who are really out here in the field really working with this stuff every single day accept it for what it is and are trying to fix it at least a little. This is a natural gas producer in Northern California saying, as a provider of gas and electricity to millions of Californians and an emitter of greenhouse gases, PG&E is like keenly aware of its responsibility to both manage its emissions and work constructively to advance policies that put our state and the country on a cost-effective path toward a low-carbon economy. So the issue is what actions are taken when will they really work? First That's to you, Congresswoman, exactly right. and then let me have Bill Nye respond. You're exactly right. And what you have to do, let's say everything that Bill says is wrong is wrong. Let That's a uh, propaganda technique she's using there. If she could have said, let's say that Bill Nye is right. She could have said that. She didn't want to frame it like that. She wanted to make it seem as though he's wrong. She wanted to associate his name with the word wrong. So she said it twice. She used a double negative to associate his name with something negative, something wrong. Instead of saying Bill Nye, let's say Bill Nye's right. She said, let's say everything Bill Nye says is wrong is wrong. 
I mean, this is the kind of thing that we see from politicians all the time. I, I watched Jeb Bush do this all through the 2016 election. He would accidentally, quote unquote, say a word that he didn't mean to say, supposedly, and then he would correct himself and say the right word when he very obviously meant to slip in the wrong word. Or here's another one in the election against John Fetterman and Oz, Dr. Oz or whatever his name, Mehmet Oz. They were running against each other in Pennsylvania for the senator position. Pictures kept coming out of Fetterman in, I don't know, clothes or doing whatever, you know, just political propaganda against him or whatever. And bizarrely, every single picture his skin was darkened. It was never lightened. It was always darkened. Who darkened that exactly? Who did it? Somebody must have. One instance of that I can chalk up to bad contrast. If I also at some point see an instance where his skin is much lighter, then I can definitely attribute it to bad contrast. But every picture nearly, really, every picture, the dude looks like he has dark skin. Now, this stuff is intentional. Marsha Blackburn knows exactly what she's doing here. Exactly right. And what you have to do, let's say everything that Bill says is wrong is wrong. Let's just say that. Then you say, what are you going to do about it? What would the policy be? And will that policy have an impact? Now For the record, I don't know why she even said that sentence. The reporter already said that sentence for her and asked her that question. She is repeating the question in a propagandistic way. Fantastic. Thank you for the propagandistic framing there, Marsha. Policy have an impact. Now, even Director McCarthy from the EPA in answering questions from Congressman Pompeo before. Do you catch what she's doing there? Pompeo was in the Trump administration. I think McCarthy was involved, too, to some degree. But she's picking out people that she thinks back up her point just to sow doubt. She doesn't want to create a new model. She doesn't want to prove that she has a better scientific understanding or any of that. She just wants to sow doubt. She just wants to poke those holes one after another. Sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. That's okay. Just keep poking them. Keep poking it. That's the goal here. Our committee said reaching all of the 26 U.S. goals is not going to have an impact globally. And David, what we have to look at is the fact that you don't make good laws, sustainable laws, when you're making them on hypotheses or theories or unproven sciences. No, you do make law off of theories, actually, because theories are the highest a, an idea can achieve the highest level you get to. You derive laws, I mean, uh, laws of science, you know, like the law of gravity or whatever. You derive those types of laws from theories. Hypotheses are ideas that you might have that you test and you cross out when it doesn't work. You modify, you change it. You throw it out, you get a new hypothesis until the model fits, until you have an understanding of what's going on. And then you test and test and test and test and test. You try to prove the model wrong. You find ways to falsify it. That's what peer review is. You want people to prove you wrong with this stuff. That's science. That's what we do in science. Ask people to prove us wrong. That's what happened with climate change. People submitted their peer-reviewed papers and asked others to prove that they were incorrect with what they were saying, and they simply could not. They simply couldn't prove it. They proved that the climate change model is absolutely correct, and it is absolutely man-made, and it can be fixed tomorrow if we just got to work and did it. I mean, this person is an absolute scumbag, and I truthfully, honestly believe that she is going to be viewed as one of the most evil people in human history. I really think so. Give it a little bit of time, and I think we'll get there. Mitch McConnell and some of the other Republicans, if for no other reason than climate change alone, the entire Republican Party will be viewed as grotesque and evil, and it's not even going to take that long, in my opinion. 
especially Donald Trump. He doesn't have much longer, especially the older Republicans. They don't have much longer to like flip their position on it, which is inevitably going to happen. Republicans will flip their position on climate change eventually, or they'll just clamp it. They'll stop talking about it entirely and let Democrats run with it and try to fix the problem, one or the other. But, you know, these older Republicans, they're not going to have an opportunity to try to shut their mouth or even set the record straight because they're going to be gone before then. So have fun with that really, really terrible reputation that you've just created for yourself. So let's play this video out with Bill Nye debunking what she just said. Once again, the Congresswoman is trying to introduce doubt and a uh, doubt in the whole idea of climate change. So what I would encourage everybody to do is back up and let's agree on the facts. Would you say that the Antarctic has less ice than it used to? We, when you said you asserted, Congresswoman, that a change from 320 to 400 parts per million is insignificant, my goodness, that's that's 30 percent. I mean, that's an enormous change and it's changing the world. And that's just over the last few decades. You go back to uh, 1750 with the. I mean, you, this is called P hacking. What she did, she said it's one or point oh 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 one percent of the atmosphere. And it went up to point oh 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 two or something. I don't even remember what numbers she used. P hacking is where. You manipulate statistics. You, you cut the end of a graph off or you use a different metric of a graph to make it seem as though the graph backs up the point that you have. In reality, there's no way around the fact that it jumped from 320 parts per million to 400,000. I'm sorry, 320,000 parts per million to 400,000 parts per million. You can't deny that. That's just what it is. Well, she's trying to anyways. Mentioned the steam engine. I mean, everybody's been over this a lot, but it's gone from 250 to 400. There is no, there is no debate in the scientific community. And I can encourage the Congresswoman to really look at the facts. You are our leader. We need you to change things, not deny what's happening. Let me get, let, so me, this, let me inject this, this weather point. event. I want to inject well, I just this want point. To say, this I, weather event's important. I want to stick to the point about what's going to happen in the future with policy. Yeah. The reality yeah. is that something is happening. And in whether you're along the. She's got such a shit eating grin that I have to imagine that this is going to be memed to hell when she is recognized as the deeply evil person she was for denying climate change when you cannot convince me shit that she didn't know it was happening in this moment when she was talking to Bill Nye. Can't convince me. East Coast, whether if you look at the, the all the money that was spent on infrastructure after Hurricane Sandy, or you look at flooding, you have state and local governments, Congresswoman, who have to deal with the realities of climate change, and it's expensive. You're very concerned You're about right. the future of our debt. There's a lot of cost involved here. How, do, how does government responsibly, even where there may be differences on the policy and the cure, respond to the very real-time impacts of weather and a changing climate? So what he just said was, there are going to be intense weather events that wreak absolute havoc. You remember Hurricane Katrina did, I don't know, what, $1.4 billion in damage or something like that? That's child's play. We haven't seen anything yet. And it, they're going to get even more frequent. They're going to wipe out coasts. Florida is going to disappear if we continue on this track, if we don't do something about it. Now, if the politicians all cooperated with each other right now, all of them in D.C., maybe we could do something about it. I think we could probably turn it around. We have the tech we need right now. We could set this whole thing up and fix it right now. But it's getting poor fools like this. I don't insult people. I don't like insulting people. But she knows what she's doing. You can't convince me. She doesn't. She knows what she's doing. We have poor fools like this in D.C. who are refusing to accept the facts of the matter, and it's disgusting. I'm telling you, man, she's going to be viewed as one of the most destructive human beings on planet Earth one day. Her uh, and Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump and, and all of them, all of them who knew climate change was happening and chose to do nothing about it intentionally. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I thought that was fascinating.
That's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. And take a look at my YouTube channels. Owen Morgan, where I talk about religious issues. Telltale Fireside Chat, where I talk about politics. Telltale Unfiltered, where I do long-form breakdowns of stuff like this. And Telltale Reads, where I read books by televangelists and others. I release everything in parts, but every part stands independently of the last. So you can jump in anywhere and I'll make sure it makes sense. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of all my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email list to get early access to everything. All links are in the description. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.